Snow Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Yamaha, Revs Your Heart, FXR Racing, celebrating 25 years of speed, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. The new Polaris Matrix platform is getting all the attention in model year 2021. It's now time to give our viewers what you want. Make no mistake about this reality. It's way too easy to get lost in length, width, and height comparisons. We know what our viewers want. You want opinion on how the new Matrix performs against its peers. The real issue is this. Did Polaris raise the bar with the new Indy Matrix? Let's start with ergos. There's no doubt the radically revised rider's perch on the Matrix platform has a profound effect on how this XC129650 handles. It's all about center of gravity. The lower the center of gravity and the more centered front to back a sled carries its weight has a profound and foundational effect on overall handling. The new Matrix moves the heaviest piece of equipment on the XC650 one inch lower and one inch is a big deal. You are the heaviest single component on the XC650 and moving your corn-fed mass lower in the chassis makes more than a subtle difference in how the Matrix turns in and remains flat in turns. Polaris wasn't done tweaking the rider's perch. The new Matrix skinnies up the gas tank seat junction by an incredible three inches. This is a massive change that you can feel standing still on the Matrix. When you're riding tight, twisty trails requiring rider gymnastics, the new narrower seat and tank give the pilot an amazing amount of room to move around while sawing at the bars, standing or sitting. Most important is this reality. The Axis debuted the bite and light slogan, illustrating how the chassis reacted to riders' fore and aft movements. The slogan is accurate on the Axis. Now though, the bite and light description goes way further with the Matrix. It gives the rider a new level of handling and control over the competition. The new 650 Patriot changes the rules in the 600 class. Polaris claims it puts out 10% more power than the 600 Liberty. Our calculations say this engine produces as much as 135 horsepower. And yes, that is an impressive number for a 600 class engine. However, it must be said that the 650 Patriot delivers this thrust in a civilized manner. Engagement is low and strong at just over 4,000 RPM, while trail speed throttle modulation is smooth and deep. There are no perceptible humps or bumps in the power curve until you approach the 7,000 RPM range where the 650 produces a strong surge of lake shortening power, leaving every 600 class two stroke behind. Here's one better. The 650 Patriot gets 20% better fuel economy at a steady 40 miles per hour compared to the Liberty 600. This Matrix XC650 is called the Launch Edition, and it will be available in limited numbers in season. However, it does not have the 7S touchscreen or Walker Velocity shocks. Instead, it comes with Polaris Message Center gauge set and Walker Evans Piggyback Reservoir compression adjustable shocks. Here's more good news. All Matrix models come with Polaris' revolutionary Smart Warmer grip and thumb system. This is long overdue technology and Polaris is breaking this technology first. Clearly, the other guys will ultimately have to bring something similar to the market. Both heated grips and thumb can be custom calibrated for low, medium and high heat levels you preset. Once you switch the heaters on using the new left side switch gear, the system prioritizes your need for immediate heat and pumps warmth to the grips and thumb heater until your preset temperature is achieved. From this point, the heat level remains consistent with virtually no fluctuation. Here's what happened to us. We forgot what the heaters were doing because we were comfortable all day. I can't begin to tell you how many discussions we've had at Snowtrax World Headquarters about the profound lack of storage on today's snowmobiles. Polaris must have heard our discussions as all Matrix models come with a cavernous two gallon heated storage trunk behind the gauge set. This trunk can swallow copious amounts of stuff, including five pairs of goggles. But wait, there's more. 
The seat can now be removed by simply twisting Polaris proprietary fastener and you get access to another generous storage compartment. Speaking of Polaris fasteners, complete matrix bodywork can be removed in less than 30 seconds, giving you access to clutches, spark plugs, and diagnostic connections. It seems to us that Polaris has taken snowmobile handling to a new and higher level with the Matrix chassis. With quality Walker Evans shocks all the way around, Polaris class-leading race IFS up front, and plush coupled long travel Pro CC rear skid ride quality, all delivered by the Roseau Brain Trust, Matrix handling and suspension convincingly set new standards for the industry. The Matrix XC650 is a game changer in model year 2021. Polaris has improved upon the access in every way without demanding any compromise. From where we sit, this is a win-win proposition. Snow Tracks is brought to you by the regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. It used to be that crossover sleds were all the rage. You know, the 137s? Not so much anymore. Nowadays, 137 is considered a trail sled, and the true crossovers, or 50-50s, are actually 144 or 146 inches in length. And with so many fish in the 140-inch sea, a lot more folks have been asking about options for both studs and carbides for these sleds. However, it's not as easy as it was in the 90s by just knowing your track info based off the sled. Now with factory options, you could have any number of tracks on your 144 or 146 inch ride. So what's the right choice? Well, it should always come down to balanced traction. And by that, I mean not too much bite up front from your carbides, causing it to feel heavy steering and awkward. And likewise, not too much grip out back from your studs or the paddle on the track, causing it to push through the corners. It's truly the harmony or the balance between these two that you should always be trying to find with your traction products. There are many companies who make traction products, but I look to Woody's who are always innovating and designing new and helpful products. From their multi-pattern stud guides to track drills, marking tools, and even shallow sockets, and easy to hold round head Allen keys for installing studs. They always have the right product and the tools to get them installed. Now the sled that I have for you today is a 2021 Polaris Assault 146. We spec'd it from the factory with the two inch lug. What does that mean for studs? It means we're not using them. But your 146 or similar 50-50 sled may not have a two inch lug on it. If you opted for either of the Cobra track options in 1.3 or 1.6, you can still utilize studs like the Grandmaster or Grandmaster Pro. They're designed to be used in single ply tracks and the Pro is now available with a much more pronounced sharpened carbide tip for even better traction. You can buy Woody's stud kits with all the nuts and backers all in one package or customize the backer shape and color to match your ride or accent it accordingly. Now with the two inch paddle out back, we're completely out of studding territory, but we're still getting huge bite, especially on those days where the snow is fresh and deep or likewise soft and heavy. If you do have one of the other track options and have opted for studs, you're gonna need to make sure that you proportion the grip you're getting up front so that you don't mess with the handling of your sled and cause it to push. To accomplish this, I recommend the Ace Carbide from Woody's because it features a unique host bar design that I've found to be the best help in keeping your long track, deep lug, or studded 50-50 sled tracking where you want it to go without becoming too heavy up front. The Ace Carbide is unique as it doesn't use a round host bar like the majority of carbide runners. In this case, it's a square profile. While you might not think a square profile steel host bar is a really big deal, remember the host bar itself does a lot of the work of turning your sled on the trail. So adding that extra square edge profile to the bottom of your ski gives you an even greater grip on the snow surface and also pushes the carbide deeper into the snow. The Ace Runner is available in four, six, or eight inch carbide versions, and this will allow you to run the right amount of carbide for your desired traction package. For me, I'll be running the eight inch Ace Carbide on the two inch Lug Assault to balance out all that rear grip. However, if you're running the one six inch track, you'd probably find the six inch Ace to be sufficient and likewise, if you bought your Assault or other 50-50 sled with a 1.352 Cobra, you'll find the 4-inch Ace to deliver great characteristics. While these are only guidelines, it's important to remember that just because you're on a 50-50 sled doesn't mean that you're not gonna benefit from the proper traction products. And in fact, the right setup is actually gonna make you more confident both on and off trail. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. 
pretty much anywhere north of the border uses some kind of ice melter to deal with their winter climate. Freezing rain, sleet, or hard packed snow, you name it, it causes all kinds of traction problems. Something as simple as opening your front door and walking to your garage can be treacherous. Those unexpected crash falls really hurt and everyone's done it at least once. The most common solution, other than shoveling and scraping, is to buy some good old rock salt and spread it everywhere you're walking. Porches, steps, sidewalks, driveways, anywhere you need to melt some ice and get better traction. Salt certainly is the most common product for these types of situations, but have you ever noticed that when you lay it down at anything below minus 20 Celsius, it really doesn't do a whole lot. It just kind of sits there. Yeah, it does give you good traction for your boots, but only if you lay down a really good layer of it. The worst part of it is when it's time to clean up in the spring. There's a white film on everything, and sometimes your concrete surfaces are spalled and etched where you've applied a lot of the stuff in the winter. Since we know for sure we need to use something to deal with the ice problem, we've been searching for a product that causes the ice to melt at a much colder temperature, a product we don't have to use as much of to get results, and one that does absolute minimal damage to our concrete, pavement, lawns, and decks. Environmental friendliness would be nice too. And how about if you only had to use a fraction of this ice melter instead of piles and piles of salt on top of one another after every single storm? We've discovered a product that does it all. It's called JetBlue, manufactured by a company called Tilson Brands. It consists of a coating that's a blend of polyols, organic salts, and bioadditives coating non-organic chloride pellets. It tackles ice fast, and when it's laid down, it actually gets started melting faster in temperatures as low as minus 32 Celsius. Because of its super melting properties, you use much less of it. And when you use it properly, you're not gonna damage the surfaces that you're spreading it on. Good news, you bet it is. Okay, we've given you an overview on JetBlue and you know how we love it for de-icing around the home. Here's where we really like it though. We keep at least one container of JetBlue in our trucks all winter. Sure, we've got four wheel drive on most of our vehicles, but we use JetBlue ice melter for more than just preventing our trucks from getting stuck. During the winter months, we're trailering all over the country and we can never predict the kind of weather that we're going to experience. Think about trying to load a snowmobile or ATV onto a sled deck in the middle of an ice or snowstorm. It can be a total nightmare. It always seems like you're losing traction at just the critical second when you need to get good bite to get you up the ramp and onto the truck. It's all about momentum. But what if you can't get enough momentum or are trying carefully to regulate your speed so that you don't fire your sled through the back window of your truck? Maybe you were already going too slow and then just ended up sitting there with the track spinning. These are real problems off-road riders face when loading sleds and ATVs in the winter. The makers of JetBlue Ice Melter really get it because they're off-roaders too. And the solution is pretty simple. All we do is go into the back seat of the truck, grab our five kilogram JetBlue shaker and sprinkle a patch about eight to 10 feet behind the ramp. We usually do this before we leave on our ride, so it gives JetBlue plenty of time to work on the ice, depending on our outdoor temperature, and then when we come back from our ride, the unloading is much clearer of ice and packed snow. Sometimes when you leave on your ride, even though the pavement was fairly dry when you're parked, if it's snowing when you leave or the snow comes while you're away, it's a great idea just to sprinkle a little bit of JetBlue behind your loading ramp. Then when you get back, you can just shovel off the area and the ice or snow won't be stuck to the surface. JetBlue Ice Melter works so fast, you can even sprinkle it again a few minutes before you load up and it'll really make a big difference in grip. Now, where you've parked your truck, you can always grab your five kilogram shaker and put a little JetBlue down in front of your tires. It really helps out after you've loaded up your truck and trailer and are looking to get back on the road. It makes sense to buy both the five kilogram shaker, it only weighs 11 pounds, and a larger bag, say in the 10, 18, or 20 kilogram sizes. This way you can top up your shaker when it's empty and still have enough around the house for driveway and sidewalk duty all winter long. So here's what we've got. JetBlue melts at a lower temperature than rock salt. It begins acting much faster than salt because its coating dissolves quickly, letting JetBlue get activated fast. You don't need to use nearly as much of the product as you do salt. The five kilogram sprinkle container is lightweight and easy to store in your vehicle, and JetBlue won't make a mess of your property when the snow melts in the spring. It's also far less caustic than salt to the aluminum and steel on your truck and trailer. Not too shabby, right? This is a great product that every snowmobiler and off-roader should have in their truck or trailer this winter when hauling. It's not just giving you better grip, it's keeping you safer. I've been in the darkness for 40 days. Last season, I did a test ride on Arctic Cat's new Riot X, and I made some pretty bold claims about just how good I thought that sled really was. 
This season, they swapped its cross-action skid with a 146-inch version of their Alpha 1. Can you help me out? I had very little bad to say about the 2020 Ride X because it did such a great job off-trail while still maintaining good ride quality and some level of handling on the trail. I've tested a few of Arctic Cat's Alpha 1 equipped mountain sleds over the years as well, and while my impression of them in the deep snow is actually quite good, my impression of them on the trail is anything but. Will the addition of the Alpha 1 be an upgrade or a downgrade for the Ride X? To answer this, we need to first go over what the Ride X actually is supposed to be and what it is not. First, it is not supposed to be a mountain sled. At least, it wasn't last season. The original idea behind the Riot and Riot X was to offer two separate crossover models, one biased to on-trail and one biased to off-trail. The Riot, for example, has a full-width trail front end and makes an excellent trail sled that's surprisingly good off-trail as well. The Riot X, on the other hand, has a 40-inch wide mountain front suspension setup and is supposed to be an off-trail sled that can still be realistically ridden on the trail. And last year, I think Arctic Cat hit the nail right on the head. This season's Alpha 1 equipped Riot X sees an improvement in off-trail performance. Like all of Arctic Cat's Alpha 1 equipped sleds, it's almost shockingly easy to get it on its side and keep it there. When side hilling in a bowl or in the trees, this characteristic is very desirable. I find the combination of short length and alpha skid make the Riot X extremely maneuverable and easy to ride in tight places. Another characteristic of the Alpha skid frame that really benefits this ride is its ability to clear more and carry less snow in the skid frame. This is a real thing. It's not fluff. It is definitely noticeable, and it makes the sled feel lighter in the deep stuff. It's also easier to dig out when you get stuck, but since I never get stuck, I definitely wouldn't know. The Alpha 1 is also lighter than the cross-action skid frame, so in one fell swoop, Arctic Cat saved almost 10 pounds off the weight of the Riot X and lighter weight is always a good thing. While there are a lot of benefits to utilizing a 146-inch version of the Alpha 1 skid in the Riot X, this move also comes with some drawbacks. First and foremost is on-trail ride and handling. Look, the Alpha 1 was never designed to be used on the trail. It's a very specialized setup that's designed to work in the deep snow. So it wasn't ever a surprise to me that Alpha-equipped Arctic mountain sleds didn't ride very well. But because the rear of the sled is so tippy from side to side, Alpha-equipped mountain sleds also don't handle very well on the trail. They tend to roll up onto the outside ski basically all the time. Again, not a big deal for a sled designed to be used off the trail. But the Riot X is supposed to be a crossover sled. An off-trail bias crossover sled, yes, but a crossover nonetheless. Alpha 1's harsh ride and tippy handling traits pretty much erase any of the positive on-trail handling traits of last year's Riot X. Despite Arctic Cat's claim that it's still a crossover this season, it is my opinion that the 2021 model is an off-trail only sled. So if that's the case, just how good is it off-trail? Well, with Arctic Cat's SeaTac 2 800 SDI engine under the hood and this 2.6 by 146 inch powder claw track out back, it definitely likes to get the front end light. In other words, it's a bit of a wheelie monster, which is fun when you want it to be, but you really have to ride with your weight forward to keep the nose from constantly wanting to go up on steep side hills. Because this sled is shorter, it doesn't have as much flotation as a longer mountain sled, so you really have to ride it aggressively with lots of throttle to keep it from getting stuck in the really deep stuff. And I think this is actually a good thing. Today's ultra-long mountain sleds can be almost too easy to ride sometimes. Unless you're in the tight trees or the steepest terrain, they'll pretty much go anywhere without a whole lot of effort. The Ride X146 brings back some of the challenge to riding in deep snow. It tests your abilities and allows you to push your limits on terrain that a full-length mountain sled would pretty much just laugh at. As I said earlier, it is my opinion that the Alpha 1 equipped Riot X is no longer a true crossover sled. This is now a short track mountain sled. But once you as a buyer understand this, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, because the Riot itself is a really good off-trail sled that easily satisfies the needs of true crossover buyers. 
and the Riot X is now more than good enough in aggressive off-trail situations to satisfy the needs of riders who don't technically ride in the mountains, but still ride in conditions that are steep, deep, and tight. Now that I think about it, the Riot X would be the perfect sled for off-trail riding in places like Newfoundland or Maine. If this is the type of train you ride in most, definitely get out to your local Articat dealer and have a talk with them about the 2021 Alpha One equipped Riot X. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap, and by Arcticat Snowmobiles. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.